Right now inside our power cabinet, I'm going to turn on the solar just so I can get some power coming in. And that's done by this breaker right here. Now that it's on and inside of this brick box, it's really like a AC shut off. We turn this thing around and stick it in, these blades in. And then as you can see, probably the lights came on on the Morningstar solar controller. So there's power coming from the panels right now. Turn on the DC. This is our disconnect. So now the DC power is on. Power is coming from the Battleborn batteries. And uh, <clears throat> we're gonna be working on uh, our um, battery management um, monitor and uh, see how that goes. All right, well, the first thing we're gonna do is remove this panel and take a look in here. Put these somewhere where they can't get lost. I guess I'll put them in my pocket. We're wanting to put the Wi-Fi unit in the wall, ideally. So it's hidden out of view and it gets its power from the trimetric, which is already wired underneath the camper over to that access panel that we looked at where I turned the DC on. So we should have plenty of room in there in theory. So I think if this is in, the Wi-Fi unit should be able to sit against this wall without too much trouble. Maybe even in here, inside, I'll show you. There's a, I'll show you with the light maybe. There's a wooden panel for the door frame in there. Let's see if you can see it. Any light? Not really. Yeah, right there. So we might be able to screw this unit on. Let's take a look at it. So this little unit is gonna get its power from this board on the Bogart. Not 100% sure which one just yet. And then uh, we will um, just hook it up to this phone cord. This little, I don't know, little phone jack to get the data and uh, hopefully screw this unit into the inside wall here so that I can take it out if I need to. Um, assuming I can get in there. So let's give that a shot. So why am I looking in here? Uh, in the instructions, I breezed through them quickly. There is a jumper in there to turn on the power. In my particular case, um, when Eddie did the install, I asked him to put in a power switch at the Bogart up here. And the reason is, um, let's see, right here. This is just an on off switch connected to the Bogart. The reason is that when we put this in winter mode, um, we don't want this to have power because it actually draws a little bit, not much probably like a quarter amp or half an amp, not even, probably way less than that. I, don't, I actually don't know, to be honest, but the only other way to do it is to remove a fuse, an inline fuse, which lives down near the shunt. I'll show you. So it's kind of inconvenient. It's like a tube, um, a little tube fuse in line, and you have to take it apart, and it's tiny, it's easy to lose and break. So just this is our power switch right here. So we're going to leave it off right at the moment. believe this is the jumper maybe not sure what that is honestly uh, that's the inside you can see you have a um, I believe this is the power jumper and then you have your um, power coming in according to the diagram 
It says the jumper is on this side. Well, indeed, this is the jumper. As you can see, uh, that is open right now. And by putting this jumper in place, like here, that is the on off. Kind of funky, but that's it right there. So I assume it's in power on mode right now. And I think there's an extra, extra jumper in here for this jumper, but I'm not, it doesn't tell you why or what you would use it for. It does say here, these connections are for Bogart engineering only. So maybe it's if you lose your jumper, I don't know. We're just gonna leave it in there because I already have a power switch on the wall that I just showed you. So what we need to know now is where to uh, wire this into the Bogart to get power. All right, well, this is pretty confusing to me. Uh, there's four wires and I, I know that this can handle two batteries, so that's why they have a B1, B2. Um, but there's two grounds, and so how am I supposed to know which ground is pre-wired in here? See, there's two of them. Uh, so I guess we just have to connect it and try it. Not really sure. B1 to WF2030, that's this Wi-Fi module, V+. So I'm gonna go, and G1 to ground. Um, so I'm gonna go red to B1 inside of inside the unit and uh, um, and then uh, we'll have to turn it on to see if the ground worked I guess I'm not sure so that's what I'm okay so you can see on this panel the orange wire is B1 you can see where Eddie marked it right here to remind him so we want to undo this little tab right there and stick our wire in there, um, making sure that we don't drop this this wire. I think it'll just hang there, so I'm gonna give that a try. The only thing that's really holding this thing in place really is this wire. Okay, after an embarrassingly long amount of time, I was able to get these wires. It turns out, um, it really turns out that I had the wrong ground, but how would I know, right? We already discussed this in this box, pre-wired, there's one just dangling about. Uh, so I picked the wrong one, but I switched it. So I've got B1 and the red line, which is on the positive. And then I've got um, the ground going into G1. So that's done. I flipped on the power. Now you can see the Bogar has power. And uh, presumably down here, that red light means it has power, I hope. All right, the next thing in the instructions is to uh, connect the data cable, which is this thing right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and it doesn't matter where you put it, apparently. Um, but then you do clip it in the other end up here, up at the Bogart, right here. So theoretically, this should be sending data. And when I did that, I got a blue light down here on the Wi-Fi box is now lit up. So I'm assuming that means that it has a, a data connection, but I don't really know. So once it's got power, indeed, uh, it doesn't really say much about the lights unless I didn't read it. But um, the blue light is the data connection. The red light means it has power. This is definitely the jumper right here. I'll get a little closer. Pulling that off will kill the power. So I'm ready to put this back on. I'm gonna screw back the lid here, hopefully. I don't know why that's not going back in. There's something on the edge of this here. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's an antenna, but um, I don't wanna squish it. Let me show you. Right here, you see that piece of film? It's kind of sticking up out of the I don't know if it's tape or what that is, but it's getting in the way of the top somehow. And I just have to push it really hard. Anyway, I'm gonna screw this back together because I think it's got the power it needs. All right, the next thing is to stuff all these cables in here and I probably should put a piece of tape over this free wire since I cut it. Um, I can't imagine it would short anything, but I don't really want to worry about that. 
So inside here, you can see the Wi-Fi module. It's really on there with just one screw on the top. It's pretty hard to see right there. But it's, it's in there, it's not really moving much. I mean, I guess it moves a little bit. I guess I could zip tie it to this sewer pipe instead. I'm not sure that'll keep it from sliding, but it might be the way to go. Okay, well, I wasn't loving that one screw situation, so I'm going to remove this guy and see if I can reach my hand inside to put some zip ties on this post so I can get my big fat hands in here. There's a sewer pipe in here. I found some really long cable ties and on top of that, the storage facility closes at five on Saturdays, which is very soon. So I kind of have to work a little faster here. Uh, there's barely enough room in here, I think, for this. So without squishing the other wires that are already fished through here for the Bogart, I have my zip ties. All right, I got four minutes to get out of here, uh, which is not enough time. So uh, I did zip tie it in here and I think it's gonna work, I hope. So I'm um, hoping I can put this all together, but really to do that, um, I need more time. Well, we're back at the camper on another day and uh, when they're not about to close, <clears throat> and I wanted to finish up this job. So I can show you that inside we have zip tied the Wi-Fi unit to this vent post, which is actually loose and I'm not sure why that is. So I have to really do some investigating. Make sure everything still works and, uh, and screw it back in. And then we'll take one more try and see if we can connect. All right, well, we're back in business. Everything's screwed in. The Wi-Fi is running. You can't see it from this uh, screen, but I took a little screen capture of uh, using the, the uh, web interface. And uh, so I know it's working. So right now it's full. It should be full. It says it's charging, but it's because this power switch was off and uh, the trimetric doesn't know really yet um, the exact charge of the battery, basically. So it says charging when flashing. I turned on the panel so it could get some power so that I could show the screens. Uh, right now it's, let's see what it says. It's got uh, a little bit of power coming in, but barely, if you look at the TriStar, which is the solar controller, if you can see the screen, it's basically doing more or less nothing right now because the battery's full. That's what it's supposed to be doing, nothing. Uh, that's the controller um, barely trickling power into the batteries because the batteries are full. So there you go. Seems successful, we'll have to update when we're on the road and uh, I can connect the, the Bogart Wi-Fi unit to my internal Wi-Fi which is right here, the pep wave, which is totally awesome. And you can set this up in like a bridge mode so that it'll only the Wi-Fi from the module will talk to this Wi-Fi and then blast out um, so we can do it in the car while we're driving down the road while we're towing. So that's gonna be great. All right, last thing that needs doing is to turn this stuff back off because um, we're done. So I'm gonna turn off the DC, which is right here. That kills the DC power. I'm going to disconnect the panels, which is right here. That kills the power from the roof. There we go. So that's off. I usually kill this breaker too. So now everything is off and we're ready for more storage, unfortunately. We're not ready to take a trip just yet.
just because of work and life and coronavirus.